Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you're checking out a Logic Pro X tip and trick video. In this video, we're going to be detailing some of the updates that were rolled out into Logic Pro X 10.2.1. So this just came out last week. If you haven't downloaded the update, you I definitely suggest that you do. It's not a huge newsworthy update in comparison with the last one that Logic rolled out, which included the free release of Alchemy. But there are some great features and updates inside of 10.2.1 that's going to make uh, Logic an even stronger DAW. And I'm really stoked that actually some of the things that have been on my wish list actually kind of came, uh, they came to, to fruition with this update. So for me personally, there's probably about three or four more things I would love Logic to do and then to me, it'd be the perfect DAW for my workflow. Now, I know a lot of you guys may, you know, may come from different DAWs. Maybe you switch from PC to Mac and you're still not liking Logic or et cetera, but it's becoming easier and better to work with Logic. So this first video, I'm actually going to do a few of these because it's such a in-depth update. This first one's going to be kind of like a laundry list of um, just kind of like the housekeeping updates, if you will. That, that Logic and Apple rolled out in 10.2.1. So some of these may be very applicable to you, some of them may not, but I wanted to hit on some of the, the ones that I thought that I found would be useful. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to Preferences. Uh, there's a really cool new feature inside of the, of the Preferences. Right here where it says Multi-Threading. You can choose Multi-Threading on playback and live tracks or just playback tracks. So if you are recording, let's say you're recording uh, a drummer and a guitar, maybe a, a drummer and a guitarist at the same time. You have two guitars on the mic, you have six to eight on the on the uh, the drum set. This multi-threading will be really nice because it'll do multi-threading for the playback and live tracks, tracks that are armed and live, ready to go. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, that's a kind of a nice little feature. It kind of helps if you're more of a band person or a you know live musician. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at here is we're going to go to the plugin manager. I thought this was pretty cool. So with the release, one of the releases with Logic Pro X 10 point, I don't know, I forget the exact number, but it was an update. You, you, you were allowed to create your own folders and kind of rearrange and put your favorite plugins into your folder. But the categories here we're um, always going to be alphabetical. So you can see here where it says Monarch, I put all those, these are the plugins that I use all the time. You'll see like Sausage Fattener, Pro Q2, Saturn, uh, the Channel EQ from Logic. I wanted all that in one folder so when I'm when I'm mixing, I can just go to the that Monarch folder and go and then uh, load up the track. So with with that, I, you see here this little this little underscore. I wanted it at the top of the categories. I didn't want it to be, I don't want to scroll to the bottom or the M's. I just wanted to be able to mindlessly find it. Well, what's really cool is in this update, you can, you can change these uh, independently from being alphabetical. So let's try that now. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to take off, um, let's actually call this Echo Soundworks for this tutorial video. And now it'll, it'll pop it down here. If I hit done, my audio is going to cut out, but we'll come back in a second. All right, so let's go here, and you'll see it says Echo Soundworks at the bottom. And these are all my plugins. Well, I want it at the top. So we're going to go back to the Plugin Manager, which is under Preferences, and then Plugin Manager. And I'm going to take this and move it up to the very top. And now because I did that, it is going to, uh, supposedly with this update, I, have, I haven't tested this out. I'm doing this in real time. Uh, I should put it at the top of that category list. So I'm going to hit Done. It's going to rescan, and we're going to uh, come back in a second. All right, so it did its thing. Now, there it is, Echo Soundworks. Now, there's all these plugins that are really cool that are the ones that I really like, and I think that's really cool. It's really helpful. Um, it's going to make any time you can do something quickly, mindlessly, and easily inside of a DAW, it makes life a little bit easier. It makes it easier so you can just focus on the creation. All right, now, another really cool thing inside of this update. Uh, let's, go to, let's go to one of these drum tracks right here. So let me play this real quick because we're going to start to bounce some audio. All right, so you get the idea. So I have a hats percussion track and finger snaps. We're gonna do this on the hats percussion. Right, really simple. Now in the uh, in, in previous versions of Logic X, see this little EQ slot right here? You could load, you just, just click here and it would load up an EQ. 
Now, the reason you might be wondering, well, why does it do the EQ instead of like a compressor or some other effect? Well, the reason is the first thing you're going to generally generally want in your effects processing chain is an equalizer so you can carve out unwanted frequencies before you compress, before you put on reverb, before you put all that stuff on. Well, that's always been like that. Um, and then if you remove this EQ, it will remove that little symbol. However, now you can hold down shift on your keyboard and click and it will insert the linear phase EQ. So let's say you're working with synths, so you're working with something that you want to have linear a linear phase EQ on, and you don't want to get those phase differences in your mix, you can do that very easily. Now, I think that is a subtle but a very cool little update. All right, so this next feature is actually one of the coolest update updated features I've seen in Logic in quite some time. It allows you to export multiple regions as independent audio files. So let's say I wanted to do for any, there's a number of reasons why I'd want to do this. Let's say you're stemming out your mix. Let's say you have a dense project and there's too many tracks of MIDI and effects and processing. And you want to get them onto audio. What you would have had to have done previously, like let's say I wanted to have these two Rhodes tracks as audio files, or I would have had to bounce in place or bounce them out of Logic, bring them back in. What you can do now is you can export things as you can export individual regions as individual audio files. So uh, it, let's do that to these road, these two Rhodes tracks and the bass. Okay, so I'm going to highlight all three. I'm then going to control click and this will bring up a little floating window where you can do a bunch of options to those regions. And I'm going to go to export and go to audio file or files. And this will do three regions bounced and then you can choose your format, bit depth, all that good stuff. I'm going to have I want normalize off. So we're going to just bounce this to my desktop. Okay, you saw that it scrubbed over it three times, which is good. It means that it did three different uh, uh, files. It went three passes. So you can see here on my desktop, here, here's the base. There it is. And here's the right. The left is probably over further on the desktop. Uh, and the, you know the fray of all my folders but there it is it, it did it all in one pass so if you're stemming out a session this can be a potential game changer uh, let's say you're stemming it out to collaborate with a friend who doesn't use the same DAW or let's say you're stemming out to get it professionally mixed or mastered and you want to work from stems you can do that really easily now and it you can literally highlight the whole session and it will just do it and drop it in the folder that you want I think that is a great workflow uh, updated feature inside of Logic X so in that kind of same vein, working with bouncing and audio or different regions, you can now you can now bounce multiple uh, tracks in place, which is kind of cool. You can actually highlight multiple tracks to bounce them all in place, and that's a nice feature. So you can do Control B if you want to do that, and then that menu still looks the same. All right, so let's talk about MIDI now and kind of the housekeeping to the MIDI, and I think this is nice. If you if you guys have ever uh, loaded in a wave or an AIFF file, you may have been presented with this little pop up window that that basically it's logic saying, hey, we've de it's detected a uh, a BPM or tempo. Would you like to import that tempo into your session? Well, now that happens with MIDI files. So here's a MIDI file from the track. Oh, you still can't play MIDI files directly off of Mac's desktop. I don't know why they stopped that, but I'm going to drag this in, and you can see also import tempo information. Well, it should be the same. So let's hit import tempo. And it shouldn't do anything differently because this was the uh, MIDI straight from the session. But here's here's the general MIDI track for it now. And that's a kind of cool update. So if you're sending, collaborating back and forth, you know, to producer friends, DJ friends from across the world or wherever they may be in the world, not in the same room with you, that's a nice little feature because then you don't have to put the tempo in the MIDI. It'll just do it. All right, so let's look at a really cool feature that was added to the project settings and how Logic handles its recording. So you go, if you go to File, Project Settings, and Recording, there's all these overlapping recording options. There's no cycle and cycle. Well, I have a cycle on, so we're going to be working from the cycle window. All the options are the same in, in both of the drop-down menus. So there is a Create Take folder, which is kind of a cool one. So let's say uh, I want to talk about, if you've never used these, I want to talk about what these are real quick. So let's say you have like a Create Take folder set. What that's going to do is it's going to create a folder of your different recordings. So I'm going to play in a lead and noodle in like little leads to show you how this works.
Okay, so I recorded two very different things uh, with the green MIDI region right there. And you can see there's a drop-down menu. And now you can kind of comp between them and see, well, which one did you like more? So that's what these options do. And that is a good option for if you're recording leads or chords and you kind of want to see what your you know options are or just loop it and see what comes out. Well, there's a new one called Create Tracks, which is pretty neat. And we're going to set that to Create Tracks right now. Now, this one wouldn't be a good option for leads if you're noodling in leads because you'll see why in a second. But it's a great option for drums. So let me go to Machine now, and I will mute the audio hats percussion. And we're going to add in our own kind of hi-hats. So I have Machine set up to my MIDI, so I can now play it on my keyboard, so I don't have to do it in Machine. So we're going to go to uh, File, Project, Settings, Recording, and I want it to create tracks. So you'll see what happens right here. It's pretty cool. So let's give this a go. All right, so I played three different things. I played this first little uh, kind of hat right here, or this little shaker, right? Then I played hi-hats, just on the ones. I'm sorry, I played right there, right? And then I added this little percussion. And you can see that I did that all in real time, and it added in it put it to individual tracks, which is really cool. So for machine, if you're a machine user, this might be a bit of a redundancy because most machine users like working with scenes inside a machine as opposed to in the DAW. But if you're using like battery or contact, any other sampler, this is amazing for drums because now everything's isolated on its own track. Now, if you're using something that's a CPU intensive sample library, it's going to be a little bit of, of, a, of a stretch. But if it's something like a battery kit that's maybe, you know, 16 samples, this is amazing that you can just have each section here, so I could call this, uh, we could call this one percussion, we could call this uh, hi -hat, we closed hi-hat, right? And now you can independently process these as you want. There's no bouncing, it just did it real time. All right, so I, I can see myself using that all the time when I'm working with drum grooves or anything that I want to go to an individual track as I'm writing and arranging in real time. So that sums up this video of some of the updates in 10.2.1. These were the ones that I thought were very useful to workflow and production-oriented tasks. There's a bunch more, so check out the, the, the release notes if you're curious about those. I'm going to post up a couple other videos. Uh, they'll be in our Logic channel on ADSR. So if you want to know about some of the updates with Alchemy, the, uh, the drum machine designer, the, dr the, uh, drummer, the drummer track, as well as the, we're gonna look at some of the reskinned native plugins inside of Logic X and maybe some new features in each. Check out those videos. So there's gonna be three more videos to accompany this one. Like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, I'm Echo Soundworks, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, post them up below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And I will see you next time.